The latest study shows an association between a coronavirus and Kawasaki disease. If you want to know more, stay tuned till the end. What is Kawasaki disease? Kawasaki disease is a systemic vasculitis of childhood that may result in aneurysms of the coronary arteries. The systemic vasculitis is characterized by inflammation of blood vessel walls. And aneurysm is the enlargement of an artery caused by weakness in the arterial wall. In the developed world, Kawasaki disease is the most common cause of acquired heart disease in children. Now let's look the symptoms of Kawasaki disease. Actually, these terms can be a little bit strange to you. So, let's try to get them one by one. First one is bilateral conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis is the inflammation of the conjunctiva of the eye. Bilateral conjunctivitis means the inflammation of the conjunctiva of both eyes. Number two is erythema of the mouth or pharynx, strawberry tongue, or stomatitis. Erythema means superficial reddening of the skin, usually in patches, this happen as a result of dilation of the blood capillaries. Polymorphous rash. Rash usually appears as red tiny bumps, and they are also raised as patches of skin. Polymorphous rash means rash occur in different forms. Fourth one is erythema or edema of the hands or feet. Now you know what is erythema. Edema is a swelling caused due to the fluid retention. The last symptom is non-suppurative cervical lymphadenopathy. Adenopathy is any disease or inflammation that involves glandular tissue. Lymphadenopathy occur in the lymph nodes. Cervical lymphadenopathy refers to lymphadenopathy of the lymph nodes in the neck. And non-suppurative means there's no pus formation. For classical Kawasaki disease, individuals must meet at least four of five this criterion along with fever. And patients who meet these criteria are likely to develop aneurysms of the coronary arteries in Kawasaki disease. Actually, etiology of Kawasaki disease is unknown, and there are no diagnostic tests for Kawasaki disease. But the evidence suggests that Kawasaki disease may be triggered by a response to an infectious agent. The peaks of Kawasaki disease are generally occurred during winter and spring. A research done by Turnier and Co. in 2015 described that 28% of positive results were attributable to Renovirus or Enterovirus, 8.7% due to parainfluenza and the remaining pathogens. Respiratory syncytial virus, influenza, adenovirus and human coronavirus were each positive less than 5% of the time. With the rapid spread of COVID-19 the pediatric population appears to be affected in much smaller proportions than adults. A recent study done by this group on scientists, based on a case of a six-month-old infant, admitted and diagnosed with classic Kawasaki disease, who also screened positive for COVID-19. And at the end of the study, they have concluded that further investigations are required regarding the Kawasaki disease for those who test positive for COVID-19.